Hi, I have a story for you. It's a folk tale from Tibet. It begins with a milk seller. That was a man who walked up and down the streets of his little village with a large jug of milk on his shoulder. As he walked, he would call out, Milk! Milk for sale! Fresh milk for sale! And anyone who wanted the milk would beckon the milk seller to come in, and he would pour some of the milk from his large jug into a, a bowl or a jug provided by the customer. They would pay him a few coins, and soon he'd be back out on the street. Milk! Milk for sale! Fine fresh milk for sale! But one day, it was a very warm day, and in the afternoon, the, the milk seller, he was hot and he was tired and he wanted to eat his lunch. And so he sat down next to a very large rock. He figured that it would provide him a good back rest and a little bit of shade and it would give him a place to rest for a bit. So he placed the milk jug on a flat part of the rock and he began to eat his brown bread and cheese. But as he was eating his lunch, down the street came a goat herd eating a goat. The goat herd was a very friendly fellow. And so when he saw the milk seller, he waved and said, hi. And that startled the goat. The goat leaped onto the rock, tipped over the jug. The milk spilled, but that wasn't the worst part because the jug fell on the ground and broke into several pieces. <laughs> it was a disaster for the milk seller because he'd not only lost a half a jug of milk, but he'd lost the jug as well. His family depended on the money that he made selling milk to buy food. Well, the milk seller was very angry, of course, and he told the goat herd that he needed to compensate him. It was your goat, he said. Well, the goat herd said, I, I didn't tip over the jug and, and I didn't cause it to fall. I'm not responsible. I'm sorry for you, but it's not my fault. Well, the milk seller said it certainly was, and the goat herd said it certainly wasn't his fault, and, and the two of them began to argue, and it looked like they were going to come to blows. When, luckily, a bystander said, you know, you two should take this matter to the judge. He is a wise man and delivers good and fair judgments. Well, they thought, okay, they would. So they did take the matter to the judge. The judge listened to both of them, and he said, well, it is clear to me that it is not the goat herd's fault. He was just giving a friendly greeting, and he didn't incite his goat in any way to leap onto the rock, to spill the milk, to break the jug. It's not his fault. Well, yeah, said the, said the milk seller, but I've lost all means of income. Somebody's going to have to compensate me. Ah, said the judge, it is my judgment that the guilty parties, or at least the parties that should be accused here, are the goat and the rock. I will have the authorities bring them to the courtroom tomorrow. There will be a trial at noon. Well, the authorities did go out to arrest the goat and the rock. The goat jumped about for a while, but finally she came peaceably enough refused to come along with the authorities. In fact, the rock refused to move at all. It took four strong men to bring the rock into the courthouse. Well, the next day, the news had traveled throughout the village like wildfire. Everybody was really interested to see what the judge was going to do. What? How was he going to try a goat and a rock? So by noon, the courtroom was filled to capacity. The judge looked around and he instructed his deputies to secure the doors of the courtroom. And then he looked at everybody and spoke. Citizens, he said, this is very curious. You have come here today to witness the trial of a goat and a rock. But more than that, I think you have come to see me make a fool of myself. I have always been known as a wise and fair-minded judge. But now you wonder what I'm going to do. Surely you know that there are no rules on the book for, for trying a goat and a rock. And so you wish to see what foolish thing I am about to do. Shame on you. 
I am going to levy a fine on each of you. The fine will be one coin to be collected by my deputies as you leave the courtroom today. Well, <laughs> the people chuckled. One coin, that wasn't much to pay for an afternoon entertainment. The judge continued, clearly, clearly, it is not the, the goat herd's fault and it is not the milk seller's fault. But I need compensation, said the milk seller. And you will get it, said the judge. And so when the authorities collected the coins from all of the spectators, those coins were given to the milk seller so that he could buy a new jug and more milk. And the goat herd and the milk seller, they shook hands and agreed to remain friends. All of the spectators, they were very happy with how everything had turned out because, well, they got bragging rights. They had been there. And not only that, but they could take selfies with the goat and the rock to prove that they had been there and to put the selfies on Instagram and Facebook because, as everyone knows, if there's no picture, it didn't happen. Well, the goat and the rock, the judge was lenient and he released them with no further action. The goat was clearly very happy at her newfound freedom. She leapt about contentedly. The rock, however, remained impassive. And authorities and reporters who questioned the rock and asked for a statement, they noted that apparently the rock was uh, maintaining its right to remain silent. And in fact, as with so many other people who've been accused of crimes, the Rock seemed to have no comment. And that is the story of the trial of the goat and the Rock.